Do you use the step recorder in the Akai Force? I've been using it a lot more lately, and I wanted to show you about it today. There's actually a lot more to it than what you would think. Uh, it's a pretty cool creative tool, and sometimes I find it to be a really nice alternative to like the step sequencer or recording manual notes, just to get some new pattern ideas and things like that. So we're going to cover pretty much everything you didn't know that you wanted to know about using the step recorder on the Akai Force. My name is Joe. Welcome to my channel. Thanks for hanging out with me today. Let's get into it. So to get started, we're just going to create a clip, and I'm just going to make this one bar. I'm going to keep all of these things pretty simple. We're going to go into note mode, and then we'll just flip over here to list mode. There's a couple settings that we want to check out. Um, the first one, if we come into this little settings wheel up here, we want to make sure that auto advance is set to on, and I would recommend that you have auto scroll set to follow. Uh, another thing here is to make sure that your knobs are in screen mode, uh, because we want to make sure that we have the timing correct on, and this time division actually controls what the length or step of the notes will be. So let's set that to eighth notes for starters. And I'm just going to go ahead and hit the record button. You don't want to hit play. You just want to hit record. And we'll just key in some notes at any speed that we want to. And when you're done, you can hit stop. And then we'll just launch this clip here. So next I'm going to show you how to clear the sequence if you want to start over from scratch. And the easiest way that I've found to do this is as follows. So what we'll do here is just pop over here to grid mode, hold down the shift key, select all, and delete. And that's pretty much it. You can return over here to list mode and start all over again. In case you were wondering, this also works with an external MIDI keyboard. Let's demonstrate. So we'll hit record. Hit stop. So that's all fine and dandy, you say, but what if I actually want to put like a rest in here? What if I want to skip a note? And there's no obvious way to do this on the screen. There's not like a rest button, but it's actually pretty easy to do. So let's walk through that too. So let's say, for example, I want to play a major scale here and I want to skip the fifth note. So I'll just hit record. And all I need to do is select this note that I just played and I'll just go ahead and delete that. And we'll put in some more notes here. Let's stop and take a listen to that. So one of the really cool things about this is that you're not necessarily locked into like a step duration while you're recording. You can change that anytime. So let's take a look at doing that using the timing correct or TC control, which is on my LED knobs. So for example, let's start off with eighth notes, just like we had before. I'll hit record. I'll put in some notes. And now let's switch this over to 16th notes as the timing corrective or the time division. And let's put in some more. We'll hit stop. Let's play that back. Another really cool thing about the step recorder is that it actually obeys the swing parameter of the timing correct as well. So let's try that. So this time we'll use some swing. I'll hit record. Uh, we'll set it to eighth notes and I'll bring the swing all the way up and let's record some notes. And if we stop and play that back, You can change the swing parameter midstream as well, so you can really mix that up with like the note durations and the swing amount. Another really cool thing about the step recorder is that it handles polyphony. So let's first check that out by just playing some chords. Let's bring the swing back down. I'll switch my knobs, or I'll switch my notes to harmonize mode. I'll go ahead and hit record. You can see what it did here. It grays out some of the steps where they're at the exact same time. Let's play that back. So you don't necessarily have to have it in chords mode. You can also do this just by playing some chords. Let's try that with the keyboard.
Another thing that you can do if you don't actually want to use the chords mode on the Forces pads and you don't want to actually play chords with your keyboard, you can kind of input the chords one at a time as well. So let's check out how you do that. Let's leave this on eighth notes and I'll just go ahead and I'll record in some single notes first. And right here, let's put a chord. So one thing I can do, I can turn this auto advance off. And if I want to, I can stop recording and kind of find the notes that I want to play. So how about... I think that sounds good. So let's go ahead and record those. I'll hit the record button again and I'll key in those notes. And you can see that because I had that auto advance turned off, these notes are grayed out and they're at the same timestamp. So it's going to treat those as a chord. Let me go ahead and turn the auto advance back on so I can go ahead and finish out this pattern. Um, so what do we have here? One, two, three, four steps. Let's add four more. And let's listen to that. Another really cool thing that you can do with polyphony is overdub. So let's check out an example of that. We'll go ahead and hit record and just record a full measure of notes. We can go ahead and stop that and play it back. But let's do something fun here and try to overdub some stuff. Let me find the notes I want to play here. I think these will be fun. So let's switch this over maybe to 16th notes just to get something different in here. And we can see that my time is set here at 1-1. So let's go ahead and hit record and we can overdub some notes. Let's hear that back. If this video is helping you in any way, it would mean a lot to me if you'd reach out and hit the like button. That lets me know that I'm hitting the mark with what I'm doing here today. Thanks for that. Next, I wanted to talk a little bit about navigation because this can be confusing. So let's just go through this with an example. Let's go ahead and record another eighth note pattern. So we'll play that back. So what if I wanted to insert another note in here somewhere? You can see we've got the playhead control up here, and if I have this selected and I move it, it just moves by beats. However, if I hold down my shift button, it's gonna move by whatever my time division is set to. So here it's gonna jump back to two and 48 ticks, and then it'll jump back to two. If I set this to 16th notes, then it's gonna advance in smaller steps on the ticks, according to 16th notes. So, what if I wanted to insert something somewhere? Let's insert it between um, these last two notes. So I'll just come up here to beat number three. And since we're already set to 16th notes, um, let me go ahead and just advance this one from where it's at. And we can just hit record and put our note in here. Let's try that one. There's actually a lot that goes on on this list view screen and you can do a lot here. And I, my purpose today wasn't to cover the entirety of what you can do with the list view. But since we're here, let's just talk about a few simple things that you can do. You can really easily edit the notes and things that are on the screen. So let's take a look. For example, if I wanted to change this note, I can just select it and I can change its pitch. I can do this while the sequencer's running. I can also select multiple notes by holding down the shift key and edit multiple things. So let's say I wanted to change the velocity of all of the even notes. So I could start here, hold down shift, press these and then use this jog wheel to adjust the velocities of these notes. I also wanted to point out that this works with the arranger. So let's check out how that happens. When I'm using the arranger, I find it pretty handy to come in here into shift uh, launch and check this box to show arrangement clips in the matrix. And then 
this top row starts to represent the arranger rather than clips. So for example, if I wanted to select the arranger for track one, I can just come over here and press on this. So real quickly, let's come over here to the arranger and see what things look like. Um, it looks like the arranger is set pretty high up here. So let's reset this, rewind it back to one, one. And it looks like we've got um, a four bar loop from one to four. So if I come back here to list view and I hold down shift and hit record, we're going to record to the arranger. Let's go ahead and go back to notes view and start putting in some notes. I'm gonna do eighth notes for this. So let's take a listen to that. And I'm currently banging back the clip it looks like because I didn't hit back to arrange. So what do you think? Are you gonna check out the Arranger? I think it's a really useful tool to have in your tool belt, along with the step sequencers and other ways to enter notes into the Forces Recorder. And sometimes I find it's the best way, depending on the material. That's all I've got for you today. This is Joe. I'll catch you next time.